so yeah um that's pretty much it let me let me hurt, wait, wait. Uh, uh, so let me uh, ah we don't need the book <laughs> i wanted to read we one don't more need thing. The book. <laughs> what's up y'all said entertaining I'm, I'm asking y'all to check out the loveology podcast this is Hello, and welcome to the Loveology Podcast, where we talk about love and life with laughter. I'm Ashley. And I'm Jason. He's the carefree one. She's the serious one. And And we're we're married. married. We have been since 2012, and we like to think of ourselves as a couple of loveologists. Not because we are the experts, but because we just love love. We enjoy studying and talking about it, so we thought, let's just start a podcast. A place where we can share what we have learned about love, relationships, and marriage. You can share what you've learned, and we can all grow together. So here we are. Are you ready? Let's get started. Hey, what's up, everybody, man? It's another episode of the Loveology Podcast. I hope y'all feeling me. I hope y'all are ready to go because we are ready to go. We about to tell y'all something today. What's up, baby girl? What's up, honey? How you feeling? How you doing? You looking good? Got your pink on? Oh, thank you. Okay, looking all vibrant and stuff. <laughs> Matching your gums. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> You're looking handsome, too, honey. Well, you know, I try to do my thing. You know what I'm saying? You repping, um, man, what is it? Memphis 10. Yeah, I was about to mess that up. Yeah, you know, you're about to tear it all the way up. Memphis, Tennessee. <laughs> Memphis or, 10. Or or M- Memphis, Tennessee. Yeah, I don't know what I was about to say. <laughs> Something wrong. Like Cashville, Tennessee, Nashville. So shout out for all my people in Tennessee, man. Memphis, I went to school, University of Memphis, graduated University of Memphis. So shout out. Also went to, went to school to University of Arkansas, Pine Bluff. But that's another T-shirt for another day. So we, let's get it on, baby girl. So how you feeling, babe? I'm feeling good. Feeling um, good. No pr- oh, so my, uh, I guess I'm still feeling energized for everyone who watched last week's episode about me taking a break and feeling fantastic and energized is still working um i still feel good so like i said we'll see how long it lasts take note fellas if you give your wife your break it will last longer you know the 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 euphoric stage is still last because she jumping around here smiling and giggling telling jokes okay damn you need to take another break <laughs> see if we can get it to another level yeah <laughs> so um so yeah i'm still feeling good um i went to a movie premiere last night okay okay for the okay. company that i work for shout out shout out shout out a uh, new billy eilish documentary i'm about to say how much can we talk about it oh you should i mean it's on apple plus so go check I'm it out <laughs> <laughs> yeah the billy uh, eilish documentary that's on um apple plus go check it out it's an awesome it film it was our first time going to a drive-in i think i I've been to a drive-in but I, I definitely is our first time together, together yeah. and the first time here uh i remember the drive-ins back in the day and i'm only 36 but back in the day where they had the little thing you stick on the windshield i mean not the windshield but the window and you roll it up and then you're good but this particular drive through they got the radio you know so you turn tune into an fm radio station mm-hmm. and it sounds amazing you know awesome. what I'm saying? as yes. long as your audio speakers in your car is legit but <laughs> I mean, we have a little Honda, so but still, it sounds great. It yeah. was people like, uh, you know, it was a Tesla beside us, and you yeah. know, it's a couple of cars. I don't know, me and Isaiah, he couldn't stay in the car for too long, so we <laughs> went running around. <laughs> and um, it was a it was a couple of vehicles that had like trunk they they trunk bed open, uh-huh. and backed into it. Ah. Ah, and so uh, they they sit and laying down and you nice. know what i'm saying got the blankets and stuff and yeah you know the the stars and the moons and stuff out there got the, the the music blasting but it's okay well the audio was blasting but it's okay it's in sync with everybody else's music so it, it is it is not disturbing anybody right, right so it's that's pretty legit i didn't know that that's really cool the yeah. next time we do a drive-in we'll super gotta to do, do that yeah super man if you haven't done a drive <laughs> a drive-in movie Check it out. It's an awesome experience, especially now since the pandemic is going on. Uh, but at the end of the day, I think after this is all said and done, we got to do that again. Yeah. Over and sure. over again. Yeah. I mean, yeah. they apparently that place that we went to, you know, they were playing other movies. You can we can go. Like, right. <laughs> we just didn't know about that place. Right. right? But right. yeah, it's cool. I recommended that long time ago when we first started going quarantine. I said, hey, you can still go to drive in movies. We just never did it. Right. And so, but yeah, Billy Eilish, man, that's the, she's super famous. Mm-hmm. You know, some, some people out there don't know too much about her, <laughs> but <laughs> super famous. Uh, she's 18 now. I think she's 19. Now. 19. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So many Grammys she's won. So that's pretty awesome. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But uh, got to get a chance to 
went to that. It was a it was a special uh, premiere. Yeah, and she was there. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but you know, obviously, you know, COVID, so right, no pictures and nothing like that. But right. she was there. So yeah, it was cool. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah. So that was fun. Yeah, great experience. Shout out to Ashley. Shout out to Ashley. Give <laughs> give 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 Ashley. A round Why are we shouting me out? Because it's your company. Yeah. Well, yeah. not my company. Well, it's but the company you work for. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, yeah, definitely want to shout out to the company that's doing your company. If your company's doing big things, then that's gonna rise you up. They said the tide rises all. That's right. You hear me? Yeah. So <laughs> if it rises her, it rises me. And if it rises us, it's gonna rise y'all. Cause y'all yeah. riding with us, baby. Let's go. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so go check that, that documentary out. It's like two and a half hours. So yeah, but it's awesome. It yeah. just goes by. You don't even. It's just an awesome documentary. Okay. Yeah. So yes, check it out. Um, so yes, today I'm also excited because we're about to jump into this book called Difficult Conversations. And like I said last time, we were um, talking about the fact that we kind of want to open this podcast up to talk about how you can have healthy relationships um, outside of romance, just healthy relationships across the board with your coworkers, with your you know grown children, with your friends. So communication is the key we say this all the time on this podcast so with any relationship communication is the most important thing and um so i heard about this book called difficult conversations so i wanted to read it and see um what we can what type of knowledge we can gain from this and yes so far i'm really liking it and for you guys and girls that are um are not used to our format just to kind of just to throw that back out there man make sure y'all hit that subscribe button make sure you hit that like button you know what i'm saying leave a comment let us know what you like and what you don't like please let us know yeah. but uh our format is ashley does 98 or 99 percent 99.8 percent of uh the research and reading on a lot of these topics um and for me the lord just give it to me so <laughs> a lot of times i don't even know what we're uh talking about mm-hmm. um i do knew i didn't know we was going to talk about difficult difficult conversation but i did not read the book she did and so that way i can be in a perspective where i may have i can ha- ask questions that you may have questions right there on the spot mm-hmm. and we can talk to it together so that's that's a benefit for you guys so um if if i ask questions and you're thinking like well, well you should know you're the love guy Guy, right no I, I don't profess to be a professional we're not I don't think we, we don't profess to be experts on the subject but uh we're all learning that's what the, the whole thing of loveology is all about it's it's the it's the, it's the study of love mm-hmm. you you got some things that that you've been through no matter the age that you can teach us about right and we got to some things that that we've been through that we can teach you guys about but it's a community let's all come together and make this thing work baby right because I'm starting with the man in the mirror why is he so excited oh, man, i'm excited when you excited <laughs> happy wife happy life baby That's y'all right. better get on with it let's go <laughs> and oh uh, by the way i did have uh well i'm about to say i had like somewhat of a break this uh this this yesterday oh yeah you can talk like about that. that i'm sorry no, we no, we no, talk it's no, it's, no, it's, no, it's no big deal it's we'll no, talk about it at the end no it's not a big deal. i'm just saying it's, it's, <laughs> it's, it wasn't you know i'm just saying fellas we was talking about how the women need break but men need break too Mm-hmm. We not, you know what I'm saying? I know we, you know, we, you know, we got it, right? But we need breaks too. So I did take a break for all y'all that was concerned because I know some of y'all was concerned about your boy, but I was good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Okay, yeah. So jumping right in to difficult conversations. So you read the whole book? No, I have not. I was just going to say that. I have not read the whole book yet. So um, we'll be, this This will be a series, you this know. It's a series. Get ready. Both <laughs> LBC belt, buckle them up. <laughs> So, you know, we'll just be going piece by piece through this book. I can't really tell you, you know, where I will stop and which episodes would cover what. But if you want to read along, you can. Right. Mm-hmm. With the book. Um, but, you know, you know, just be honest, like I have a lot of stuff going on, so I just can't read it all at once. Um, but, you know, it's good to break it down and just like really discuss it piece by piece anyway. So expect by five parts. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> <laughs> Buckle up, y'all. This is this should be good. We all should be able to have those difficult conversations, not just with our our uh, our spouses or our boyfriend and girlfriend, right? Also with your boss, right? Yeah. Also with a, an employee, 
right? Also with your auntie, your mama, your brother, your cousin. This is a relationship podcast, right? Mm -hmm. So we're talking about relationships and, and that's all or your children. You know what I'm saying? So this is going to talk about that, I'm pretty sure, right? Yeah, Let's abso go. absolutely. I mean, basically these principles can be applied to any of your any of your relationships mm -hmm. basically so okay so about this book except the relationship with your dog yeah that one <laughs> that's a joke from last time too. yeah for all my <laughs> people that yeah <laughs> Where's our with the womp, womp, womp. yeah i don't have can, the, can the we... stretch armstrong i gotta go all the way <laughs> <laughs> i gotta go all the way to hit that yeah but yeah that, that, was, that was a joke yeah, Let's, yeah. there it is <laughs> i gotta bring it closer next time <laughs> Um, okay, so this book explores what it is that makes conversations difficult, why we avoid them, and why we often handle them badly. Okay, what is a difficult conversation, Jason? Um, what is a difficult conversation? Yes, it's it's something. I think a difficult conversation is something that's just really been eaten away at you, and but you know, bringing it up will cause some type of stress. To, to, to some type of conflict maybe in your um in, in your relationship and you just want to make sure you saying it the right way so uh, you don't want to cause no problems so I I, I kind of see that as a, a difficult conversation but it's a conversation that need to be had yes and what you just said we will definitely go into in a few minutes about the conversation that needs to be had but um um it's anything that you have a hard time talking about right mm -hmm. so what you said <laughs> you um you like so, that i be on point like that okay so, <laughs> so, so so i mean i'm trying to think of some examples right but like probably with your co-workers conversations about politics or you know i don't know well that ain't, that ain't a conversation that need to be had necessarily <laughs> especially at work yeah but know. i'm trying to think of an example where I don't know. It could be something with your friend. Um, I'm trying to think of a hard conversation. Maybe well, maybe they did something that you didn't approve of, and you feel like a responsibility to tell them. Well, but, difficult difficult conversation in a relationship, especially if you got kids on you know discipline the children. Yeah, that's a difficult conversation. Mm -hmm. yeah. If you have different views about, right. what, especially if someone feels strongly about their view. Right, right. Yeah. So it can be any number of things. So. Um, but going back to what you said about like the conversations need to be had, this is a quote from the book. If we try to avoid the problem, we'll feel taken advantage of our feelings will fester. We'll wonder why we don't stick up for ourselves and we'll rob the other person of the opportunity to, uh, to improve things. Mm. That's you're not that's, bringing it up. You're not bringing it to their attention because why? I can't see you. Remember that? Remember yes. That? Yeah. <laughs> That's from a previous episode. Boop. Check it out. <laughs> yeah. But yes, that that one right there, like the la the last thing of you are robbing the other person of an opportunity to improve things. That is so important. Because at the end of the day, what you want is improvement. Right. But sometimes, ladies and fellas, yeah. you want. <laughs> Don't just say ladies. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. <laughs> Sometimes in a lot, of, you know, you want the 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 man or fellas, you want the woman to to learn or to get it right on their own. They mm -hmm. should just know. You should just know. <laughs> Some people don't just know. They didn't live the world, the life that you live. They right. didn't. They didn't see the stuff that they that you saw. Also, they wasn't taught by the same teacher that you were taught by. Right. So they have their own path. So sometimes it's okay to 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 take their hand gently and just bring them, guide them back onto the path. That's yes. All. Jason, Jason, he do be on point sometimes. <laughs> and she does not like to give him my props. Yes. But I tell you, it's from the <laughs> Lord, y'all. That's why it, that's why it comes. Yeah. So, yes, that is another thing that we will talk about later on um, as far as, like, all of us having our own stories, right? Yeah. Um, as to, like, how we perceive things. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, so that's very important, and we will touch on that later on. Mm -hmm. Okay? Here's... Um, Another thing, uh, these these are reasons why we 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 avoid. That was the first thing that I just said. But this this next thing I'm going to say is these are reasons why we don't want to confront. Right. Um, but if we confront the problem, things might get even worse. That's what we're afraid of. Mm. If we confront the problem, we may be rejected or attacked. We might hurt the other person in ways he did not intend. And the relationship might suffer because sometimes like. Sometimes even if you are telling the truth, 
like it still hurts the other person. Yeah. Uh, but guess what? Sometimes pain is necessary. <laughs> right. They say no pain, no gain. Right. That's mm-hmm. what they say. So, yeah, that's just part of it. Right. Yeah. So, you know, it is what it is. When you do sit ups, you know, me being in the military, Ashley, she's in the military. You know, you do so many sit ups. Guess what? It's going to hurt. Yeah. Don't it? But that pain compared to the pain of not doing the sit ups, which one is greater? Yeah, you see what I'm saying. Well, here's a here's a good analogy. Okay, you look, look, look. She happy, boy. She got she got it, one. Look, it's not mine. It's oh, it's here, no. but I want okay. to be Jason. Jason and his analogies. He's always giving analogies, so I'm like, let me go ahead and give this one before he. Uh, before I say it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Because I have about five of them. I just pick one. Okay, uh, this is, and I'm reading from the book. It says, delivering a difficult message is like throwing a hand grenade. Try as you may. There's no way to throw a hand grenade with tact or to outrun the consequences. And keeping it to yourself is no better, like what Jason was just saying. Choosing not to deliver a a difficult message is like hanging on to a hand grenade once you've pulled the pin. So you're going to blow yourself up. But my thing, only thing about that analogy is <laughs> you don't like the why, analogy. Yeah, I mean it's a, it's cool, you know what I'm saying. But it's like he just hating because I'm not, it's not hating. His. I'm not hating. It's just you know it was. Yeah. My thing is you finna you finna throw something to to uh, see the or I'm gonna hurt me or I'm gonna hurt them. You know what I'm saying? It's a, it's a so, hand grenade. Yeah, but he's saying it's like there's no way to like it's 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 probably it's it's basically he's saying it's gonna be difficult. Yeah, it's cool. I can, I can rock with that a little bit, but I'm just saying it's not. You know, it's not necessary pain. It's not. It's not good pain. So well, I'm just yeah. saying, you know, you got, you got, you got good pain out there. So you know, you gotta, you gotta know. Yeah. You know, so okay. that hand grenade is gonna blow well, up. Let me make sure that I'm, I'm like interpreting this correctly, correctly, because I think basically what they're saying that this book is gonna help you do is to switch from delivering a message to having what they call a learning conversation. So just changing your mind. Like if all you're trying to do is deliver a message, then it's like a hand grenade. But if you shift your thinking to like, we're about to have a learning conversation, then it won't be like that. Right. Mm -hmm. Like if that's the way that you're seeing it. So back, like kind of what you were saying about people seeing things differently because they have different stories and they have different upbringings. So if you're coming to the conversation with this idea that I want to learn more about this person and learn their perspective instead of just coming straight to them to tell them how they're wrong and you're right, Mm -hmm. then, then you will have a much better conversation and it won't be like a hand grenade. I guess. I think the hair grenade is really whack. Let, oh. let us know in the comments, please. <laughs> <laughs> let me stick to let's, let's keep Jason on the analogies, <laughs> even though he wrote the book. Okay, so it says this book will teach us how to shift from a message delivery stance to a learning stance. Okay. Basically, what I was just saying. Okay. okay. All right. So we want to be clear that you will never eliminate fear or anxiety. Um, about having a conversation Mm -hmm. but you can reduce fear and anxiety and learning how to manage what remains to be um a more that that remains to be more obtainable is what it said Mm -hmm. so kind of like what we were talking to our daughter about yeah you know if you're afraid like you have to do it afraid but you have to learn how to like manage your anxiety in order to be able to do that thing right so that is what like difficult conversations are hard and we will have fear and anxiety but if you if you prepare yourself then you know by learning some tools to have this sort of conversation then you won't have as much fear and anxiety about it Mm -hmm. okay let's go (laughs) so it says that all difficult conversations have a common structure and and again understanding that structure will help you have the conversation first thing we have to understand is that when you're having a conversation there's a lot of things that's not being said Mm -hmm. right so the words that are coming out of somebody's mouth there's a whole lot of other stuff going on in their head more than likely some people just really speak their mind and they speak it you know all of what they're thinking and what they say is, you know, but for the most part, wouldn't you say that most people probably got something else going on that they're not saying? Sure. And sometimes that's wise. And then sometimes it's like not. (laughs) Yeah. I guess it does depend on the intent, but, uh, you know, but yes, but it's, it's important to really, um, paint the picture properly for your, for your, for your mate. You know Mm -hmm. what I mean? Because if you don't paint that picture properly, then, 
they won't they don't they they won't know what you're talking about right you know what i'm saying they'll they'll it, it'll be thrown off a little bit it'll be received wrong yeah or you know there's there's just a lot of times some of the stuff that we're not saying is just very it has something to do with maybe our self-esteem or i don't know other reasons you know so it's just really difficult to share that part of it yeah right um but according to i didn't say the name the, of the authors of this book um their names are douglas stone bruce Patton, and sheila heen and uh, they did something called the harvard negotiation project and from that is how they came up with the materials from this book oh, okay jason's like okay <laughs> <laughs> So there are three type of conversations that's going on when you have a, a difficult conversation. Okay. Okay. So number one is so the, it's all at one time. Yes. Okay. They're saying all these things are happening at one time. At the same time. Okay. Yes. So it, the first one is the what happened conversation. Um, the second one is the feelings conversation. And the third one is the identity conversation. All right. Break it down. Well, we're only going to break down the what happened conversation. <laughs> we'll talk you about the other ones later. <laughs> Y'all got to wait for the next episodes for the next one. Yes. All so, right. So the what happened conversation is where we spend. Or what the F happened. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> the what happened conversation is where we, we spend. We had those conversations a lot. <laughs> Not necessarily us, but I'm just saying people in general. Yeah. We had that conversation. Oh, yeah. Gosh. <laughs> <laughs> and it's normally dealing with a lot of yelling and stuff. Yeah, so that's what I was about to say. Is is where we spend much of our time in difficult conversations as we struggle with our different stories about who's right and who uh, meant what and who's to blame. Right. So this is this is the biggest problem. And not- and, and again, who's to blame? Uh, you know what? I ain't gonna say all the time, but I would say nine times out of ten, both both parties have a part to play into it. But go for it. Okay. We'll see. Yeah, we'll see. So the first thing is the truth assumption. I'm right and you're wrong. Mm-hmm. That's how most people go into a conversation. They have an idea, like we, there's an event, and in their mind, you are wrong and I am right. Right? I don't rock with that. Okay. But you totally done that before. Yeah. <laughs> no, nah, because I'm saying like, what I'm saying is I'm thinking like, well, I don't think you can just be like I said. You can't be one hundred percent right. You know what I'm saying? It's it's got to be like maybe eighty percent right, and then mm-hmm. they can be twenty percent right because they holding on to something for a reason. Mm-hmm. They got a stance for a reason. You know what I'm saying? So it's like it's about shifting their perspective to see what, how how could they have this stance? How could they think this way? But go for it. Yeah, Jason, you he be on top of it, and it's pretty much what he's saying. Difficult conversation. Man, get get this book out of here. Let's just talk. <laughs> <laughs> difficult conversations are almost never about getting the facts right they are about conflicting perceptions interpretations and values mm. and i think the values one is a really big one too because when you think about like culturally like how people can be offended by something that another culture may not be offended by you know what i mean prime example india and some indians and cows you know what I'm saying? So we treat our cows differently here. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you might speak to someone who's Indian and you may talk about how, you know, you had an awesome burger. That just was good. <laughs> right. And so, you know, but I'm just saying, but you, you don't know that they some Indians say, that, you know, that they're um, they're they're their cows are holy. You know, their cows mm-hmm. are, 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 you know, they don't they don't treat they don't look at their cows like that. Mm-hmm. And so you can offend somebody by uh by by saying something so simple as getting a burger from in and out. You yeah. Know what I'm yeah. And you know, so that has everything to do with values. It's like, well, we you just have a different set of values than I do. So am I wrong for saying that I want an in and out burger? Like, no, it's it's you know, but are you? Mm-hmm. I mean, well, to whoever <laughs> is offended by people eating a cow, then yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but there's no there really there's there is Should only Should we be eating cow? There but there's only perceptions is what I'm saying. Right. Like the fact that the, the, the there's a fact that you ate a burger. Now, depending 
depending on whether or not you're going to be offended about that is whether or not you have what your perception is, you know, so you're applying your perception to that and your interpretations and your values. Right. So I think that's like super important. And the main thing is not necessarily uh, look, pay attention. No, uh, actions is something that we look at a lot, but you got to really focus on the intent because just because I said, man, I had an awesome burger. Yes, I did eat that burger. Uh, but my intent wasn't to hurt, hurt you or to disrespect you uh, because of your beliefs. Yeah. So intent is another thing. And we're going to go through that next time, next mm-hmm. episode. But that's one of the other things that they say get people in trouble when we are having conversations. And it is um, that a lot of people assume that you had negative intent. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because of the action. Yeah. And because of what I'm you what what I what I know what what's in my world what's in my head mm-hmm. so by seeing your actions easily oh that that's three so obviously that's one plus two you know what I'm saying <laughs> but that may not be one plus two that might be six minus three or three plus zero exactly <laughs> so, so um so yeah but the only way you're gonna get that intent is you gotta have that conversation you have to have the conversation so that's that's definitely what it's about look at High five, Jason. High five. I gotta I see I gotta I gotta go on roll. I gotta, I gotta hit them about three, four, five of them out of the park just for give me some props. <laughs> <laughs> so this one was I feel like was a powerful statement. It says that the conversations are not about what is true. They are about what is important. Mm. So what is important to the other person is like really what is driving this difficult conversation, you mm-hmm. know. So I okay, so basically we need to stop arguing about who's right and explore each other's stories. Like mm-hmm. he said early on, mm-hmm. like this is, you know, m- basically both people are right. Yeah. I really love your six and your nine analogy. Could you tell that again? Yeah. I you just, said this in other episodes. Yeah. I said, it's just, you know, just, uh, and I, you can see the picture on the screen. Uh, you know, you got one person at, at the bottom of the six and the other person at the top of the six. And from their perspective, the person at the bottom of the six sees a six. The person at the top of the six sees a nine. Who's right and who's wrong? Right. Nobody. Nobody. <laughs> both right and both wrong. Right. But it's all about perspective. So from per- from your perspective, you could be right. Mm-hmm. But from another person's perspective, you could be wrong. So you have to share each other's perspective to get a, a, a better 360 degree view of the situation. Right. So the way the book says that is um, basically, you know, you think I'm the problem and I think you're the problem. Right. And so going back to what you just said, it says we don't see ourselves as the problem. In fact, we aren't. What we are saying does make sense. Right. What's often hard to see is that what the other person is saying also makes sense. Right. So we each have different stories about what is going on in the world. OK, so again, we have to figure out what is, you know, what story, what is their story and, right. and, and uh, figure their per, um, perception perspective. out, perspective. So out. real quick, but on that six and nine analogy, that was for a neutral uh, situation. You know what I'm saying? That's a neutral situation. Sometimes the situation is like, no, they in the wrong. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like, and it's you, you, you got to, and, and I mean, I don't know if the book gonna talk about it, but here's an example of where the other person is in the wrong, and they just can't see it, right? So you take an apple, right? I think I talked about this before in a podcast, but you take the apple, right? From you, on your perspective, you see a nice, beautiful red apple, right? Mm-hmm. But from my perspective, it's all dented up, and it's a worm coming out of it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But you can't see it. Right. And you said this is a good apple. Mm-hmm. From where I'm seeing, this is, ain't nothing wrong with this apple, boy. Mm-hmm. No. The apple is jacked up. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to I'm trying to help. You see what I'm saying? Right. So here's the deal. When you have those situations where they are in the wrong and you know they're in the wrong, but they can't see it, you you have to acknowledge their perspective. Mm-hmm. You got you gotta say, you know what, I can see how you see. I can see how you can see it that way from your perspective. Uh, but you know, could you see how I could see it from my perspective? Could you kind of open your mind and see that? And then y'all can share perspectives. Yes. If I was in your shoes, I would totally be, I can totally see what you, what you're talking about that way. And then, but you know, looking 
looking for my shoes, can you see how it's kind of jacked up? Mm-hmm. That way, you kind of release them from that that stance, that hard stance, because they just want to be right. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like you, you, when you know something, all the information that you got, you just want to say, "No, I'm right." You you don't know what you're talking about. I'm right. Right. So you want to let them know that yes, you are right from your perspective. I get it. Mm-hmm. But from the from a different perspective, from the full, if you get all, if you get more information about it, you can see that uh, it's probably better for you to pivot out of that uh, out of that situation. And maybe I can pivot from my position too mm-hmm. a little bit to help meet a, a more mutual point so we can move forward. Right. You know what I'm saying? So basically, Jason could have just wrote this book. Oh, yeah. He, every time he says something, I'm like, okay, well, that's like the next thing that they were saying. Oh, okay. Jeez. <laughs> Uh, they said that the um, people almost never change without first feeling understood. Mm. So just what Jason just said, mm. they got to feel understood before they can change because otherwise it's just like, well, you just don't understand. Right. So you're wrong. Like you don't get it from my point of they view. You just can't even hear the rest of what you're trying to say. Yeah. Because they're not being acknowledged. Right. First. But if you if if I feel like this totally is me all day. I'm very big on I need to feel understood. Right. So if I feel like you're not understanding what I'm saying, then mm -mm, it's just not going to work. Right. (laughs) Because I'm like, how can I agree with you when you're not understanding what I'm saying? Right. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, you're right. Yeah. Right. (laughs) Right. But, you know, maybe I'm not. You know what I'm saying? But at least you got to acknowledge you have to. the key. The key words are like. You know what? I can understand how you can feel that way. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like from your perspective, I can see how you came to that conclusion. Yeah, those are some key creep man. Write them down. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like that's gonna help. Like it's just it's gonna take you so much further. Right. You know what I'm saying? Just those two things, right? Mm-hmm. And and then from there, you can proceed on on what you're talking about. Right. If you if if they if they get some acknowledgement, it's like okay, okay, I'm feeling this. Kind of like what they were talking about. You want to get used to somebody saying yeah. Mm-hmm. You want to get you know in sales. You want to get used to somebody saying yes, yes, yes. And then once you get to the point where you're trying to sell your 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 side of the story, they are already used to saying yes. So it's like okay, I'm good with this flow. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's like a little river. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm good with the flow. But if you you know, if they trying to go a, a different direction and you push them, it's, it's, it's too much conflict. Mm-hmm. And that's going to that's going to that's going to cause static in the communication. Right. So the last part uh, about that, what, what we're talking about right now is to to get anywhere in a disagreement. We need to understand the other person's story well enough to see how their conclusions make sense within it. Mm. Um, mm. Yes. That's, yeah. that's and, it. And, and even <laughs> so, even if you completely right and you know you're right mm-hmm. right like you know that this apple is a bad apple you see the worm and everything mm-hmm. but you have to take the time to understand where that person is sitting where they come from and really get an understanding of how they came up with their perspective mm-hmm. because once you do those types of things you can kind of break down and understand how they kind of think a little bit right. and then from there it can you can you can take that same a model and put it on other things you see what i'm saying and that can help with future conversation or future situations mm-hmm. and it may even help uh avoid conflict altogether because it's like well i know last time he did this well you know let's say hey before it even become a conflict hey come and check this out you know mm-hmm. what i'm saying let me let me go ahead and show you this other side of this apple before you before we even get to biting it mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying yeah. so it's just kind of being proactive yeah absolutely so yeah, um, that's pretty much it. Let me, let me, wait, wait. Uh, uh, so let me. Uh, ah, we don't need the book. <laughs> I wanted to read we one don't more need thing. The book. <laughs> this was the last thing that I wanted to read about it, <laughs> just to make sure that I like fully uh, say correctly what you know. But the hand grenade analogy, I just want to make sure that we understand that basically. They're saying, okay, so this book. She's trying to save her analogy. No, because because the analogy is for a difficult conversation. But Uh this book is saying, this book will help you turn difficult conversations into learning conversations. So, uh, uh, like what I was saying earlier is like, it's not the difficult conversation is like a hand grenade. But if you take the learning conversation approach, then it's not like a hand grenade, right? What is it? A better, 
a better situation. It's a better hand grenade? <laughs> no, it's not a hand grenade. They're mm. saying that, you know, we don't want to have difficult conversations. We want to have learning conversations. Oh, okay. So basically, uh, here we go. So so basically she's saying if you don't not if you don't know how to have a difficult conversation properly, mm-hmm. then it will be like tossing hand grenades. Yes. But if you learn some of these tactics and some some learn learn some of these ideas uh, that a lot of people already went through and we're kind of showing you right now, mm-hmm. then it won't be throwing a hand grenade, it's just be putting together peace treaties. Right. <laughs> Putting together peace treaties. Yeah, that's okay. the whole point of war, right? When you put, if you instead of uh, actually killing people in war mm-hmm. because you want different lands and you fighting over land, you can just put together a negotiation where y'all fighting at the table. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? You just you just having a disagreement at the table, and then y'all can come to a conclusion just off of and no bloodshed. Right? There's no arguments. There's nothing. It's just a. It's just a, a simple like, okay, yes, that's your points. That's my points. Okay, sign on that line. Let's go. Right. Everybody happy. Right. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So that's it for this episode. That's it. That's all. <laughs> uh, so next week we'll go more into like learning about different stories and talking about intent. You know, we'll just say don't assume stuff because you know what they say about assuming. You know what I mean? You make so. an ASS out of yourself. <laughs> you hear me? So, yeah. but you know what? You know what I like to hear. I want to hear what's some. Give me some some difficult conversation topics. Like I, I talked about earlier, a difficult conversation was a uh, um, was what. What I say earlier was a difficult conversation. Uh, how to ra- you know raising discipline your kids. Mm-hmm. Give give us another di- di- difficult conversation title, and then uh, maybe we can you know in the comments and maybe we can talk about how we can resolve those difficult conversations. So let's get active in these comments, right? Yeah. Let's let's share this thing. Let, come on, if you feel like this was a great episode, you feel like you, you learned something from it. Even if you already knew those things and you feel like we, we presented it in a proper way, share it. Don't keep it to yourself because the more you share, the more that you care, right? Oh. Sharing is caring. Yes, it is. But the more you share to <laughs> others, the more that others will share with you. Yeah. All right. Well, so, I want to really quickly, here's a few, um, here's a few examples, okay, mm-hmm. um, of the some difficult conversations and this idea that I'm right and you're wrong. Um, So they're selfish. These are some of the ways that people think um, about other people. My girlfriend won't go to couples counseling with me. She says it's a waste of money. I say it's important to me, but she doesn't care. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think she's selfish? Uh, Is she selfish? (laughs) We don't know. Oh, no. (laughs) They're naive. My daughter go, uh, got these big ideas about going to New York and making it in the theater, but she just doesn't understand what she's up against. Maybe she right. Maybe she don't understand. Or maybe she do understand and she still want to do it anyway. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's, that's different, but oh, that's, that's what that's a, a parent going to do that. Right. But and, it's still a difficult conversation. It's a difficult conversation. I don't know, man. You don't think so? No, because it's like I'm 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 opt- optimistic. So yeah, I'm going. If my daughter want to go to New York and and do that, man, let's go. But I'm talking about if you uh, you opposed it like this person. Wow, uh, well, I'm not opposed of it. So okay, there wouldn't be a difficult conversation. <laughs> They're controlling. We always do everything my boss's way. It drives me crazy because he acts like his ideas are better than everyone else's, even when he doesn't know what he's talking about. Mm. Uh, yeah that's a difficult conversation <laughs> they're irrational my great aunt's bertha bertha sleeps on this sagging old mattress she got she's got terrible back problems but no matter what i say she refuses to let me buy her a new mattress everyone in the family tells me rory aunt bertha is just crazy you can't reason with her i guess it's true you just gotta buy a new mattress <laughs> just gotta do it and, yep. and and when you have any difficult conversation with people who do what jesus did you gotta, you gotta, you gotta tell them in parables, man. You gotta break that stuff down <laughs> and and present it to them in a parable. Something that, something that's simple, something that's that's easy, easily digestible, but also something that's totally different from what y'all are talking about. That's why you so big on your analogies. I guess so. <laughs> Look okay. at Jesus. Look at God. You hear me? Yeah. It just, it just, it, 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 it pulls you out of your perspective. And points you in a different direction, but the principles aren't the same in both situations. Mm-hmm. So if you understand this without the emotion of that, then you can bring that that mental clarity to over here, and you can kind of get through that situation better. Yeah, 
All right. Yeah. That's enough wisdom for today, y'all. We're going to shut it down. <laughs> <laughs> all right, baby. Uh, you, you good? I'm good. That's I'm it. Great. That's all. All right, man. I hope y'all enjoyed this this week's episode. We're going to come back again next time. And uh, we're going to see y'all here live in the place, man. Thank y'all. Share it. Subscribe. Hit that notification bell. All that good stuff. Go to loveologypodcast.com. Get you some gear. Also, don't be afraid to be a patron. We appreciate it. We started off at $2 a month. So, hey, man, go check us out. If you do the next tier, you get a free T-shirt. <laughs> So that's it. That's all. Peace out. Bye.